you know, we, we volunteer because we care. We volunteer because we care about helping others, about making an organization stronger and making our society better. We don't do it for praise. We don't do it for recognition. We certainly don't do it for the money. But we're rewarded in knowing that we've made a difference in something and along the way have made friendships that are going to last us a lifetime. Every year I am inspired and, uh, and motivated by the ded dedication and passion that's shown by our volunteers. We first awarded this award in 2006 and this year we're fortunate to be recognizing our 14th recipient, Stacy Armijo. This weekend, we're also fortunate to have three of our past recipients in the room with us. Please join me in recognizing our 2015, 2016, and 2017 recipients, Amy Favreau from Richmond, Dennis Devlin from Cincinnati, and Evan Carroll from Triangle. Please stand, thank you. As Christine Gooding from Iowa quoted so beautifully yesterday, Find a group of people who challenge and inspire you. Spend a lot of time with them, and it will change your life forever. It is my honor to introduce one of those people who has changed my life forever. I first met Stacy Armijo right out there in 2006. I was the president of the Professional Chapters Council, and she was president-elect of the Austin chapter. Little did I know that I was shaking hands with someone who had already established herself as a leader and someone who would go on to greatness, both as a volunteer and a professional. There are many ways to describe Stacey Armijo. We could talk about how she enjoys a good Manhattan cocktail. We could talk about how she loves nothing more than a Cuban cigar. <laughs> But I think the most fitting way of describing Stacy is the same way that you might describe something that many of you are wearing on your ring finger, a diamond. For those of you who study gemology, you will know that diamonds are classified through four elements, cut, color, clarity, and carat weight. Let's start with carat weight. This or not your weight. I could go there, no. This refers to the impact that Stacy has made through her contributions to the AMA and society. Stacy has been a member of the AMA since 2003 and served on the Austin Chapter Board for seven years. She went on to serve on the Professional Chapters Council for five years and was the Leadership Summit co-chair in 2010 while she was pregnant and giving birth to Ronnie Jr. In the words of her nominator, now that's dedication. She went on to serve on the AMA Audit and Finance Committee and currently serves on the AMA Board of Directors where in just a few months she will take the gavel to serve as chairperson of the board. So yes, Stacy has made an impact. A diamond's color can refer to the many roles Stacy plays in life. Wife, mother, volunteer, friend, and a business professional serving as chief experience officer for Amplify Credit Union and someone who has been recognized as woman of influence by the Austin Business Journal, Austin Under 40 Award for Marketing, PR, and Advertising, and a fellow in the Next Generation Project by the Robert S. Strauss Center at the University of Texas at Austin, all before the age of 40. In terms of clarity, Stacy is open, honest, and transparent. When you're around Stacy, you know exactly what you're getting into because you're around someone who sets the highest of standards for herself self and others and is very clear in her desire to make the world a better place. Finally, when we talk about cut, we can look at the facets of a diamond and how they reflect light. When Stacy Armijo walks in a room, she brings the light from outside and reflects it onto those around her. She does not selfish, she doesn't absorb the light, but rather she allows others to shine. Stacy, like a diamond, you are strong. Like a diamond, you sparkle. And like a diamond, you are sought after and highly regarded treasure. You have made an enormous impact on your friends, your family, your community, and the American Marketing Association, and it is my pleasure to say congratulations, Stacey Armijo, our 2019 AMA Volunteer of the Year. Thank you. That would be great. That's beautiful. Hi, everybody. <laughs> 
I don't know how you talk after listening to something like that. That's almost kind of mean to make somebody get up here and, and say something after hearing that kind of amazing thoughtfulness. Oh my gosh, wow. Uh, I can't tell you what it means to get an honor like this one. Um, I, uh, I have the pleasure of knowing a lot of the people who we call Volunteer of the Year, who you get to see, many of whom are sitting right here in this room. And um, to think that I might be put in the same category as them in terms of impact and, and what we've accomplished for our members and for each other is, is truly humbling. Um, and huge shout out to my Austin crew. Oh, I had no idea that they had nominated me for this. And Robin Toombs called me and she said, I have two pieces of good news for you. And I was like, cool, what's up? She said, I joined credit union, so I'm kind of new to my job. I was in an agency before, so she was also in kind of a similar role at another agency. She took a similar role at a credit union. I was like, awesome, we're going to be colleagues in our own association. That'll be great. So yeah, OK, I have some other news. She's like, did you know your chapter nominated you for the volunteer of the year? I was like, no, didn't know that, didn't know that. She's like, and you won. I was like, oh my god. So. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to be up here. Uh, mostly thank you for the opportunity to do something that you think is worth uh, being able to do this. So um, I kind of thought about what would I, what would I want to talk about with you guys. Um, and I, I was reminded that I think the three Gs apply here. So uh, the three Gs are something that my family and I uh, came up with a couple of years ago. Uh, we felt like our family needed sort of like a motto or a, you know, how do we, how do we care for each other? How do we make decisions together? You know, what are the things that we're teaching our kids? You know, how are we, how are we talking about that? And so we came up with the three Gs. Uh, and the three Gs are uh, gratitude, growth, and giving. So we felt like those, if we can teach our kids nothing else, we can teach them how to be grateful, we can teach them that growing is really important, and we can teach them that giving makes all of that worthwhile. And it's a, a not a vicious cycle, it's a beautiful cycle that keeps giving back to each other. Um, and that was the first thing that popped to mind when I thought about uh, the role that AMA has played for me in my life. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about that. So the first G is gratitude. And I don't have to advance the slide to know that's what's coming next because there's no emotion that I feel stronger about right now than gratitude. Um, I am incredibly grateful for the people that I have come to know and for the opportunities that I've had. Um, I am especially grateful for these folks. Uh, so this is me and my family. These are my boys. Uh, so that is, uh, we call him Big Ronnie because we also have Little Ronnie. So Ronnie Jr., Big Ronnie, that's my husband. And uh, little Ronnie is on the left, and that's William on the right. So there's a little bit of a dated picture. So they're now, um, my boys are nine and almost five, is how old they are now. Uh, and I wanted to start here because they've been on this journey with me, especially Ronnie. Yeah, they, so you guys can probably relate that um, who is the person that hears all of the drama, all of the venting, all of the everything that is staying with the kids while you go to the committee meeting or while you're right here at Leadership Summit. Guess who's taking care of the kids? That's Ronnie. Um, and, and the person who is just your, your backbone. So for me, he is my, my wisest counselor. Uh, he's also my fashion advisor, so he picked this out. <laughs> but, uh, but that's mostly just like an extra benefit of uh, the role that he has played. So I am incredibly grateful to them um, and to your families. So the reason that you're here is because you have people that surround you that help you take care of life and let you be here. So I am grateful to all of their families because that means we get to have this really fun and exciting experience. I'm also grateful to these people. So this was a random selection of AMA pictures from my Facebook stream. So what I did was I went back through Facebook and I took the first five pictures that I found. You won't be surprised to know some of them were taken like 10 minutes ago, right? That, but I am so grateful to the people that I have the, the pleasure of knowing, um, not just because we get to serve together, but because we get to be friends together. I have never found an organization that brings people together for way more than just work in the way that AMA does. And it's something about what draws us to this, and if I could put my finger on it, I'd be a much wealthier woman, that makes us also really like spending a lot of time together. So like some of these people over here, they like flew in just to be here because I was getting honored. There is nothing that can make you feel more incredible than that. So uh, I am very grateful for, for all of those people who have played a role in, in what I'm doing here. So second G, growth. 
I have long said that being involved in AMA is the best professional development that I have ever done. And I continue to believe that, it continues to be true. So um, you heard a little bit about kind of some of my AMA journey. So I started at the local chapter level. Um, I was attending a luncheon, as I was known to do around that time. I would go to the uh, alphabet soup of luncheons. I would show up to AMA and IABC and PRSA and all the things, right? And I just would kind of come to the lunch. Um, and at one of those luncheons, somebody walked out to me who I didn't know and said, do you do PR? And I was like, yes. And he said, we're looking for a PR chair for the board. I was like, um, OK. And so I better join, right, because I'm going to be on the board. So someone I didn't know asked me to randomly join the board because they had a spot. If I could have known the impact that that would make on me as an individual and as a professional, I would go find. I, I don't even, I don't, his name is Griffin. I don't even remember his last name, and we have clearly lost touch. But if I actually ever saw him again, I would give him a great big huge hug and probably freak him out because I am so grateful for, for the role that he played in that. So um, I think I was like 27 or something when that happened, something like that, early in my career. And, um, so I did PR chair for a year, and then I uh, was the vice president of communications. And about halfway through that year, um, as is known to happen, uh, our president-elect resigned, because, you know, that happens. And so I went from VP of communications straight into the role of president. And uh, that, was, uh, that was quite an experience there. That, so that's, that's me with uh, back in my, my day as president. I can't skip over that very terrible picture, but that, that was 28-year-old Stacy. Uh, and that was my face when I found out that I was supposed to be president. Like, are you kidding? Like, I actually asked people, like, you know, like, you know how old I am? Like, do you know what my experience is? That are, are you sure? That, so yeah, yeah, you're going to be great. It'll be great. Okay. I mean, I think probably uh, for better or for worse, usually for better, I am always going to tell people that I am not equipped to do something, but I'm willing to try. That, I, I would say that's probably a theme of life. Um, and I've gotten all my best opportunities doing that because sometimes we underestimate ourselves. And so you think there's this long and involved process that's supposed to go behind things. There's really not. Show up, do some good work, do your best, do it with good people. You will accomplish amazing things. And we did some cool stuff. So we, we had a good time at the local chapter. Um, as you heard, I got to be on the PCC. Got to be on the PCC is intentional wording. That is a special, special group of people that um, care exponentially for all of you guys in the room and care for one another in a way that is truly special. And um, I am, I've gotten to grow through that. So first I got to grow through being a local chapter leader and figuring out how to juggle a bajillion hats and invest like three hours a day in AMA because we had things going on and it was a lot of work. Uh, and then I got to be on the PCC. I got to learn about a different way to grow. So when you're on the PCC, your job is not to do. You don't do things. Like you don't go into a chapter, you don't host programs, you don't send out emails, you don't create programming strategies. You support, you support and advise, you guide and you teach. That's your job as a PCC member. And that was a new way for me to be involved as a volunteer. So it taught me a lot about leadership and about how to work with people in a way that I don't think I could have learned at my day job. So 17 days. That's how long, on average, uh, research would tell you, uh, a new job, uh, a new salary or a raise motivates an employee. An average of 17 days. I can't quote my source on that, but I share it because that feels so anecdotally true. Like that when I'm thinking about times I've gotten promoted or I've gotten a raise or something like that, and you just think, oh, wow, this is really cool. You know, I've gotten some, you know, they're really investing in me and I really need to give back. It's a little over two weeks before that's the new normal, and this is now table stakes, and we're moving on to whatever is next. So I got to manage volunteers before I ever managed people. And I am so grateful that I did because um, we make uh, a whole lot less money than any of the people that I have ever managed. Zero whole dollars for showing up to do everything you do. In fact, sometimes you're actually spending your money, right? Like you're showing up to luncheons, you're buying the seat, you're here and you might have had to cover some of your travel expenses and that not only are you not making money, you're actually spending money for that experience. Um, so when you're the person who gets to manage, the people who uh, are not making any money and who maybe are spending their own money, you learn a lot about what actually motivates people. It ain't money, it's other stuff. That means you need to have a higher caliber of expectation for yourself about what you're delivering. What are you delivering to the people that you're working with? What I discovered was um, it was not my job to do, which as a kind of a younger individual contributor at that time, that was a, a, an important learning for me. And it was my job to set the direction, set the framework, give people room to run, and navigate the intersections. 
That was pretty much what I figured out was my whole job. So um, in working with other people, it's strange. Exactly the same thing works in my day job. So I now really approach managing my teams in exactly the same way that I approached and learned how to manage volunteers when I was an AMA leader. So I share that because um, it's not always fun, right? That what we do here is, is not always amazing. Um, we had my, my, after my year as president in Austin, we had something called the pizza party, which is where Michelle Verdula and I met. So quick story on that, uh, you meet the best people in the unlikeliest of places, and that is an unlikely place for me to find somebody who is so important to me because um, it was basically an intervention with the leadership of the chapter, and it really doesn't matter why, but there was drama, right? And um, we actually had our PCC rep come in, Colin Hageny. Some of you probably know him. He happened to be my rep. Um, he actually came over to Austin and attended what we later decided to call the pizza party because we happened to have our board meetings at a pizza restaurant. So it was, uh, there was pizza and conflict. <laughs> pretty much what was on the menu. And, you know, they go together really well. Uh, and at the time, I was stressed. I was so stressed about this. I was not uh, experienced at knowing how to navigate personality-based conflicts. And my husband would ask me, like, as of course, once again, I'd be like venting and stressing with him. And he'd often ask me, he'd be like, why, why are you doing this? Like, you have bigger things in life. You don't need drama of some volunteer organization. And it was a fair question, right? Like, you, we have to ask ourselves that question sometimes. Like, is it worth it to go through this? At the time, my answer was, it's the right thing to do. I committed to this position, I said I was gonna be there for the members, I believe that what I'm doing is there for the members and I need to follow through. So it was kind of about that, but in hindsight, I would answer that question differently. I learned so much through that process, through going through that process about how to navigate conflict, how to see things coming better, how to organize and rally a group, how to, um, how to recruit people, how to get people that are looking in the same direction that you are. I learned so much that I use way beyond my role with AMA today. I would say I'm, I'm not terrible now at being able to walk into a situation, assess it relatively quickly, say I think this needs to happen, if we did it that way it might be different. I learned through the drama that I helped our members through as AMA. So I share that because I hope you are pumped and excited right now. Like I hope this is like the highlight of your year as it was for me every time I was in Chapterland. And even when I get to come back now, like I still like it's just contagious, the energy of this event. You might feel a little differently around like January, February. Things might feel a little different. Some of the experienced chapter leaders in the room know what that feels like. That part of the year where you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm not even halfway done. And, and here's the things that are happening and all that kind of stuff. When you reach that moment, I would encourage you to think about what it can do for you. What navigating that moment could mean for you and your career, not just for the members of AMA. The last G, giving. So um, I, I would say I am a selfish giver. So by that what I mean is uh, I'd love to believe that I, I am someone who likes to give of my time, talent, and treasure because it is the right thing to do and we should all help each other as humans. And I really do believe that. However, what I know about giving is it gives back way more than you get. So um, I feel like a million bucks every time somebody says something to me along the lines of, you know, you were in this session that I was in, or you said that thing, or we had that conversation, and it, it changed things for me. Mahali said that to me yesterday, and it made me feel like a million bucks, that we uh, had cocktails in the uh, lobby of the Marriott during the summit that was the race cars, and uh, he was mentioning something about a strategy and he was kind of struggling with what direction to take it for, for Triangle. And I said something along the lines of like, what, what, do you, what do your members want of you? Like, what do, you expect, what do your members expect of you? Is it really meeting that expectation? And he shared that that changed what they decided to do for the year. I feel amazing when people tell me stuff like that. Like, it just makes me feel like the time that we spend here matters and the work that we do matters. So I would encourage you all to, you'll never know what most of those moments are. But if you're a person who gives, you're gonna discover now and then, you're gonna discover that you made an impact on somebody and you might never have been aware of that. So I would encourage you to be generous with the way that you engage and tell people. Like if somebody really made a difference for, the, for you, go tell them. Nothing will ever make them feel better than if you do something like that. And I would encourage you to think about how you're engaging with the people around you um, as an invitation. So when uh, the dude at Austin AMA, who I don't know anymore, said, hey, we need a PR chair, 
came up to me. He approached it as like a favor, right? Sometimes we think about that, right? Like, oh, we got all these board seats. We have all this stuff that we're trying to accomplish. Can you help me out? Do me a favor. Can you help me out? If you've used those words before, you, you kind of know what I'm talking about. We, we have all shown up to friends with bottles of wine or big coffees and, and asks of, of needing some help. Um, I would encourage you to think about it a little bit differently. AMA has been incredible for me and my growth and the relationships that I've made. Um, I would encourage you to think about that as an invitation to the best party that they're ever going to get into. It was for me. And if you help them know what that experience could be for them, and you make that true, right? That's our obligation as leaders. You can't just have people show up and expect them to have an amazing experience. We have a role to play in making that true. But if you do that, you don't have any idea what that might return to you as a leader, what it might return to your chapter in terms of value, what it might return to that person who you extended that invitation to. So my hope for you, my hope for you is that you can have you can have relationships and connections to people that are sitting around the tables right next to you, like the ones that I have gotten to have with a lot of the people right here in this room and a lot of them who aren't. I can't tell you what a difference that could make in your life and what it could mean for you. And you are right there in that moment right now. You have the moment to make that choice right now. You can. Kind of disengage when you're between sessions. We can get caught up on work. We can be tired, and we are, right? Like, it's a long weekend. Um, or you can decide every random handshake in that hallway over there might be the handshake between Rick Sweeney and Stacey Armijo. And you can use those moments to help each other grow your careers, grow AMA, and, and discover what this might mean to you in a way that I have discovered what it means to me. So my last thank you, of course, has to go back to the people. This was last night in and, and the, and the PCC suite. That's who happened to be there in the suite. Uh, and that's, that's what can happen for you is like, do you see? It's giddy, right? Like our faces are giddy because we get to see each other and we get to spend more time together. I want you to feel the same kind of giddy that we feel every time that we see each other. And if I can do something to help make that happen, let me know because I want to help. Thank you. I'm gonna get